Super. 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 What up, boys and girls? It is I, the head cheer captain, baby boy Brank, from Super BS Bring It On Again, a podcast about cheerleading and sometimes about video games, but mostly about cheerleading. I'm joined by my cheer squad captain, the cheertastic Jankosaurus Rex. <laughs> nice. Uh, Jankosaurus, I've heard that your cheer squad is the number one in the nation and you're going to finals. Are you going to be able to beat the dastardly duo from uh, <laughs> Austin? I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> the Wolverines. You got to beat them, the, man. The audacious Austins is what they're the called. Audacious Austins. Yeah. I like that because it's like the worst name ever. They didn't even try with the, the audacious. Audacious. Uh, Austin, audacious. Uh, it's where we Audacity. Live, so. Audacity. They like that music program a lot. They like the recording software. Audacity. The Austin Audacity. <laughs> Sponsored by Audacity. Dude, I am <laughs> hoping that's the future we have where schools are just the name of corporations where it's like the Costa Mesa Hewlett Packards. <laughs> and, uh, you know, all the school and sports teams just have the name of corps, like all of our stadiums. Real, real original. I would like that. Is that like a joke from something else? No. I okay. Was just, I was just coming up with things that sounded. I was looking for them uh, sweet, sweet synonyms, you know? Hell yeah. Like, I I think Angel Stadium is like the... Oh, I think Angel Stadium might not be one. It's like the t- Honda Stadium or whatever. They all have like the name of a corporate sponsor now. They're not like actually the stadium's name anymore. It's like, uh, or or what's that? The Honda Arena, right? That's where the Ducks play. Honda Center. Honda, Honda Center. Center. There we go. Yeah, I always just find that stuff funny where it's like, why didn't they just name it the Duck Stadium? <laughs> like, yeah. I get that the teams change, but also the corporations change. Uh, enough about corporate elite speak that we love to do here. Um, what have you been gaming on hard? Hard. Um, okay, so I actually, I what did I... What did I finished something? I don't remember what it was. Uh, no, I don't think I finished something. I think I was going to play something, and then I decided to play for uh, Forza's Lego expansion instead. I was going to okay. play. Uh, I, was, I was telling you I was going to play Scarlet Nexus or Mario Golf, and then I started playing the Forza Lego expansion, and so I've just been playing that. And I gotta tell you, man, really, really dig that series. You know, it's like you can play forever on that game like literally forever like if you were if you're someone who doesn't have games pass and you just decide to lay the 60 bucks down on that back when it came out and was it 2019 i think yep yep november you'd be you'd be good you could pay 60 bucks and they just will keep adding content on there forever like this game is you know i'm sure once forza 5 comes out they'll they'll stop support for it but like Dang, man, this is, game has had just so many hours that I've been able to put into it. Yeah, it reminds me a lot of a lot of the larger budget uh, AAA <laughs> games like um, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, mm-hmm. where they just kind of are infinite games. Like, yeah. I, I really do like Forza 4 from what I've played. But yeah, that I'm, I don't know how I feel, though, about the infinite game cycle. Like, um, when I talk about some of the stuff I've played this week, they were both games that were able to be finished in like a relatively reasonable time and yeah I, I like that when it's a little bit condensed there is something fun about those infinite games when you really like the loop like i know you love forza 4 so or forza horizon 4 so like that is like yeah okay that's a fun infinite game to go back to but you know assassin's creed valhalla is so large i don't know if i'm ever going to finish it for that exact same reason yeah yeah uh, and like i i totally get that too like i i had not You know, I had not had any intention on going back to Forza. And then I remember, you know, when they had that Xbox sale back in the spring, you know, I was I bought this this add on. I just never got around to playing it. So I figured, why not? And, uh, you know, it's not like a it's basically like they skinned the world in Lego stuff. You know, it's not like it's not like a whole thing where you get to, like, build your cars and build your house. You know, like you're 
you, they they give you Lego cars and they like help design your Lego house. You know, it's not a big, uh, it's not like a separate game. You know, like yeah. it, and because I imagine that would probably cost a lot of money, but it would be fun to do like a Lego racing game like that. But um, yeah, Did no, it's. Huh? Oh, go ahead. Hasn't Forza like toyed with toys before? Didn't they do like a Hot Wheels? Hot Wheels for yeah. three. Forza, Forza three. Horizon three. Forza Horizon yeah. three had a Hot Wheels track yeah yeah so i mean you know that being said not a lot to like really dwell on this but it, it's it's a it's pretty fun you know i'm i'm enjoying my time with it i love like running into the uh the environment and seeing the legos shatter and all that so it's been a good time yeah i think that stuff's really neat like just like a fun idea to have like a, a very serious game but you have like a side story that is like a lot more fun and mm-hmm. i feel like other especially ubisoft tries this a lot like far cry 5 i didn't play any of the dlcs but they were all like pretty silly whereas the main game was like overly serious so yeah. like most of the dlc was like go to space go to vietnam go to wherever um mm-hmm. i i like that idea i actually almost picked up some of those dlcs but i just i far cry 5 is my least the, favorite far the cry blood so dragon is the that blood the dragon? one no that was far cry 3's uh oh. dlc but no, Far Cry 5 had like three DLC packs and each one was a different mini open world map. One was Mars, <laughs> one was Vietnam, and one was, I want to say zombies of some sort. So I can't remember exactly. No, what... no, no games ever do zombies. That's that's Game... completely unheard of. Games that's such and zombies a... are totally yeah. different. No, nobody's yeah, ever even nothing. seen them before. It's such an original concept. No one's done that ever. Yeah. Can you just Have stop you, stop lying on this show? Come on. I am a notorious liar, uh, baby boy Brank, liar of the year. I won the award. Um, yes, the Far Cry 5, Dead li- Living Zombies. Dead Living Zombies. Yeah, that's the stupidest <laughs> thing I've ever heard of. Yeah, but anyways, they, they have that stuff. Yeah, man, have you uh, you played anything else or has it been mainly just uh, surfing the Legos? Just mainly just surfing the Legos, man. I, nice. I've, uh, yeah, um, I play, I tried to play Dark Alliance. I think I told you this off air, but I tried to play Dark Alliance. It was just too much fun. So you it couldn't was get to it. So much fun. I literally was incapable of playing it because, and I hope they fix this patch, but it just, it just keeps kicking you off. Like you're on, when you play the game, you're on a live server the entire game. And you just, if there's, an issue on their end it just keeps booting you off over and over again even if you're playing single player like you have to be i don't know what happens but like you have to be somewhere in their server and like have a good connection to it in order to keep playing the game whereas like i tried to play and just kept getting booted over and over and over yeah i mean that game sounds like it has a lot of issues i haven't really gone to try it out yet but I I don't know, man. It's one of those games that I think is perfect for Game Pass in that you don't need to pay money to try it. So if it yeah. sucks, you didn't spend money on it. Whereas like if that game would have come out not on Game Pass, so like say you're a PlayStation owner only, like you have to spend forty dollars to check to see if that's good. And yeah. I don't that game does not sound like it's worth forty dollars. Um it has like the it looks like the graphics might make it seem like a forty dollar purchase, but the the actual gameplay seems like it's maybe like a twenty dollar, like no, almost like a, it, a very beautiful indie. Yeah, it it's I don't know it it feels to me like I've I watched some videos of it. It feels to me like a um, what you call it, like a gauntlet style dungeon crawler. You know, it doesn't really go beyond. There's not a lot of substance to it beyond like just hacking and slashing and doing your uh, you know, your very minimal skill trees. Yeah. Yeah, I I may give it a shot, but I have so much other stuff I'm playing right now. I I finished actually three separate games since the last time we talked. I was almost done with two, and the other one I did not know it, but I was almost done with as well. I uh finished Ratchet and Clank, um Rift Apart or Rift Apart, I think. Yeah. That game was uh phenomenal. That's either my favorite game of the year or my second favorite. I mentioned that last time I was at the very end. I did get the platinum. Wait, trophy. so it's your favorite game of the year? I don't know, but I mentioned that I I, I like it a lot. Um, but it, I did get the platinum trophy. I did finish it on normal. I do not think I will go back for a second playthrough. So that's why I'm thinking I might like Village more because the first thing I did after finishing Village was boot it back up and start again because I wanted to do stuff with the new guns. Um, yeah, I, I really, really dug it. I think it's a great game. I think it has a really, really weak opening. Like, that intro is just not very exciting, and it really takes to about the second or third planet for the game to start getting going and fun. 
That being said, it is a very by the books Ratchet and Clank game. It's there's nothing really new and exciting about it besides the graphics. So I can't be like, oh man, you gotta play it. They're doing crazy stuff. Like the rift mechanic is exactly what I thought it would be, which is just like uh, essentially like fluff. It's just like your character yeah. moving, you know, yeah. through different landscapes, and it, it doesn't right. seem that neat. Yeah, I mean, th- and that's it, like I, like I told you, like yeah, I mean, I know you last week said it does deserve the nine and like to me it was i i think it's like an eight eight point five maybe but like it it didn't really exact it didn't reinvent the wheel as far as like 3d platformers go you know like it just it felt like a ratchet and clank game but it was just i guess a little more fun to look at than your normal fanfare yeah it's weird because i think i enjoyed at the time ratchet and clank the reboot 2016 more but yeah. this one is a much better game. It's faster. It's more fun. It's it's iterative, right? But I think Ratchet and Clank 2016, I expected it so much less. Like I picked that game up for 15 bucks a year or two after it came out, and I loved it. I played through the whole thing. But looking back, like going back to 2016 would be hard because this one is so much faster. Once you get those rocket boots, you can essentially skate mm-hmm. across every place in the game and they they give you a lot of things that make it pretty fun and quick and snappy so you're kind of always going um i wish the rift mechanic was cooler in terms of like i i love the ssd stuff but it would be cool to see the rift taking you to different lands without being like in boss fights or cutscenes where that's where it what happens you know maybe you need to see it on like kind of a normal level like kind of like mario odyssey with those um i forgot what they were called like the mirrors that let you jump between worlds without going on Cappy, the hat. Do you remember what I'm talking about? Like you'd go through like a portal to another world to get yeah. a uh, a moon. Like it would have been yeah. cool to see Ratchet and Clank do that because that that was like a neat mechanic on the Switch in 2017. Is like, oh, you can access a whole nother world without going through another loading screen. Um, at yeah. least I don't remember a loading screen. I also finished the very, very recent Resident Evil 7. <laughs> um, I know it's a 26, 2017 game. I want to say it's 2017. Um, yeah, that game's great, man. I uh, It's weird. I was talking to Dr. Donna and you about it, and um, it is hard to compare it in 8, but because I'm a big fan of comparing games, I will say... I enjoyed 8 slightly more, but only because of what they do differently. Like, Resident Evil 7 is a true horror game. It is Mm -hmm. not an action game like 8 is. 8 has horror moments, but it's predominantly action. And 8 is very similar to Resident Evil 4. Whereas, like, 7, I felt like, was more reminiscent to Resident Evil 1. So... Yeah. 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 Well, the the, the cool thing about 7 is that they stepped... They stepped outside the lore, you know, like even Resident Evil 6, they're like, oh, we went back to the basics, but they didn't really. You know, I think yeah. Resident Evil 7 is almost like, a, I guess you could call it a reboot of the series, because you don't even know that it's connected to Umbrella until, you know, the the DLC where, you know, what's his, what's his face shows up. Um, so, uh, oh, Chris, Red, you mean? Redfield, yeah. Like a lot of that, like it's, I think it's either at the end of the game or in the DLC that they add on, but you don't really feel like it's attached to the franchise until you know they put that stuff in there yeah yeah i i agree um yeah chris is uh, a very late addition i don't want to spoil much in resident evil 7 but yeah they don't really do a lot of tying it into the series till the very end and they kind of did they did something similar in 8 to be fair like there was some earlier mentions of like umbrella and stuff but it wasn't like you know one two three where it's umbrella 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 you know it's like this yeah. corporation did this like yeah. i I definitely love that series and I love these reboots and I hope the next one stays in first person because I think it's just such a good switch so far. I hope the next one straddles the line between seven and eight and doesn't go harder into eight because I do love eight, but any less... Yeah, hard straddling is what I like to do, but (laughs) mixed with bumpy rides. Um, Mixed with a hard straddle on a bumpy ride. But I uh, I just don't want it to be just action. You know, I want to keep... Because there's better action games. You know, I want yeah. to keep like that horror, the semi-ammo conservationist standpoint where 8 was like, you don't really have to worry about ammo. And 7 was like almost not fun because there was moments where you had to worry about every bullet early on. At the yeah. end, you didn't have to. Well, like... So, so on that thought, yeah, se- seven was was really ammo conservative, wasn't it? Like the first half of it was 
like almost to a non-fun degree was like yeah, every bullet needed to be mm-hmm. shot and hit and that's it had what to be headshots. I, yeah, and that's what I remember about it. And then I think like with 8, uh, you know, at least where I am so far, like I've enjoyed the fact that like, yeah, your ammo, you need to be conservative with your ammo, but you also like you have an excuse now to go exploring into all the little nooks and crannies because they give you crafting material to make more ammo by going into those things like, oh, hey, there's a crate. Let me bust it open. Oh, look, I got some, uh, you know, metals or whatever I need to make bullets. Yeah, and you could also buy ammo if you needed to an eight. There was a what? lot of like opportunities to uh, to do stuff that is not traditional Resident Evil. And like I said, I don't want them to go any heavier into the action for action versions of Resident Evil because we saw where that goes. Five was essentially like the poor man Gears of War that had really cool co op, but it just wasn't like it wasn't as good as Gears, but it was still pretty fun. It was that style of game though. Yeah, uh, yeah. Five felt like it was it was too confined. You know, I I loved it. I I really enjoyed my time with. It. I remember playing with my brother, but like yeah. it just there wasn't a lot of exploration. Whereas like I feel like eight does a great job of like giving you things to explore and giving you a reason to go exploring. Like if they ever want to attempt co op again, I'm totally. I think that's a cool idea, but I think they need to attempt that in like a. This is a smaller campaign that they added. You know, like what they've been doing with all of those terrible multiplayer offshoots that they release with every game now? Like, I think they have one called Reverse that's yeah. supposed to come out with eight. Yeah. Um, Dr. Donna says he liked it. Reverse? He, he, he said, didn't, Dr. Donna said that he, he thought it was okay, right? If I remember our text thread. I, I don't remember. I don't know if he tried it. I tried the previous one that came with, two or or it came with three and it wasn't fun i played it once and it was like it would have been fun in the nintendo 64 era but at this point it just it wasn't interesting so yeah if they want to do a co-op thing instead of that where they make like a short mini campaign with co-op in mind that could be incredible you know but just to like force co-op in the main campaign it kind of ruins the resident evil aspect of it so yeah yeah, and then uh, the third game I finished, which is also a real recent title, Pikmin 3 Deluxe. Uh, I, uh, My story with that, you've heard multiple times. I received it as a gift. I returned it. I didn't buy it while it's on sale, right before it dropped even more, like a dummy. I got it, and um, that game is a lot of fun. It is really short. I definitely think the price point of 60 was way too high. I'm glad I picked up at 40. I would have felt a lot better picking it up physically for 30 because... It is a game I don't see myself going back to. I got digitally for 40 because that was the price. But yeah. it's um, it's good. It's great. Like, I loved it. It's really short. Like, I thought I was only halfway through the game, and then credits rolled. So, I <laughs> yeah, I, I thought there was way more. But it's like maybe a six, eight-hour game. There's like five biomes to explore. They're all pretty small. So, um, could you play it a lot faster if you wanted to? Oh, Yeah. I could have finished the game in half the time. I went out and got a bunch of other stuff too. I didn't get everything because I thought there was more to play. So I didn't, I didn't like, I just, you know, got what I was having fun. And like some days I just collect Pikmin and stuff. But yeah, that game you could probably finish in in three hours, three or four hours if you've done it. And if you skip. So it's, it's a really fun three or four hours. It's still an incredible eight hours. I just was disappointed by how short it was. I feel like it yeah. should almost have come with Pikmin 1 and 2 for the price. Now, right. there's like side stuff like DLC where you play as Olimar that came out for the Switch version. I tried one of the missions. I may play them. I may go back through and play them, but they weren't that interesting. They're just kind of like small little challenge rooms where it's like, oh, you only have 20 Pikmin. Try to finish this room. That's like, okay, and then you finish it, and then you're like, okay, here, go to this next room. You only have 30 Pikmin and this thing, you know? So it's like, that's never the type of game I like to, you know, and then you get a rank at the end of it. That's never yeah. the type of game I, I like to enjoy, is the so whole ranking. With the Pikimons, do you have yeah. to catch them all? Poke is Pikimons. That... You got to catch them all. <laughs> you know, that was another thing that really disappointed me, is there were five different variants of Pikmin. I want to say there were five variants in Pikmin 2, so I was assuming there would be seven in this game because there were a couple that didn't return. So yeah. I was a little bit disappointed with how kind of lackluster the game felt. It really felt like they just rushed it, which is weird to say about a Wii U game that then released on Switch years later that had like no real need for a, a second 
for like an upgrade. Um, yeah, man, I, I, I think it's great. So I apologize about the complaints, but it's, it is weird. It's just weird to feel like, oh, hey, okay, this is kind of like Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze, but that game was a lot longer. So at least for 60 bucks, that was a pretty long game. Do so, you know what I, do you know what I would pay 60 bucks for? Like you were talking about like Wii remasters. I would pay 60 bucks for a Switch version of Dead Space Aftermath without the motion controls. You liked that game a lot? Well, I I no, I didn't <laughs> like the motion control aspect of it, but if it were just like a like a, a you know what it was meant to be like a first person shooter in the Dead Space yeah. universe, like I would I would pay for it because like you the one thing that keeps me from playing that game again is the fact that it is motion controlled, and I just did not enjoy that. Yeah, I mean, uh, to be honest with you, if it hasn't happened now, it's never going to happen. But yeah, that, uh, there are a lot of games I would actually gladly pay $60 for if it was a Wii remaster. Wii U, there's only like a couple left, and that's like Wind Waker, which is, yeah. uh, you know, I never got on Wii U, so or I got it, I never opened it, so I'd like to play it, and... um and like maybe Twilight Princess, maybe Xenoblade Chronicles X. I'm not sure, but Wind Waker is is the one that I'm I'm hoping they'll still do. Otherwise, okay. though, man, like we there's so many good games that if they upgrade the graphics like they did for Xenoblade Chronicles, like I never played the Last Story, um the the famous uh, Last Mistwalker console game for Wii, where it's like a Final Fantasy style game that released Project Rainfall and it came out like after the Wii was essentially dead. Um, yeah. So, like, I would pay 60 for that. But Late to the party, man. Yeah, man. Um, and then the final thing I've played, so I finished all three of those games. Final thing I played, because I got this one for dirt cheap, 30 bucks for a, a first-party Nintendo game, which might as well be $10 for anything else. Um, Paper Mario the Origami King, I want to say, is what it is. What is the... Oh. Yeah, Origami King. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was uh, $30 at Target, same day as uh, Pikmin. They both went on sale kind of after the Nintendo Switch sale was kind of ending, where they were 40 on it for digital. And I was thinking, I was like, hey, even if I hate it, uh, I could probably sell it or get rid of it and only lose a couple bucks, so I picked it up. Um, yeah. I'm at the very, very beginning of it. So far, it's really endearing. I haven't even tried the combat system yet, though, which is what people say gets old because there's no RPG uh, mechanics or elements, so it's like a puzzle game. So... We'll see how far I get, but so far it's it it's really 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 fun. Like I think it's really neat. Uh, but like I said, I'm about an hour in. I don't really have a lot to say. I just wanted to mention that. Yeah, I picked that up. I'm gonna I'm gonna try it out. There's some other stuff. The world ends with you, Neo demo that I'm also gonna try out. But you know, I mean, so being an hour in though, is this gonna make your game of the year list? Is this... Uh, yeah, it will. From last year, somehow I'm gonna go back since okay. it's a 2020 title, and yeah. I'm gonna kick off Yakuza Like a Dragon as number one and put Paper that's, Mario Origami King. That's what the fans wanted since to hear. I played it for one hour. <laughs> yes, how'd you know that? You know, I spent 60 hours with Yakuza Like a Dragon, but this one hour has been more fun than all 60 of those hours. Um, no, man, there is uh yeah i it's 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 a neat title i can't i i recommended it to you and dr don but you didn't pick it up did you end up getting either scarlet nexus or mario golf super rush you mentioned that you were gonna get these yesterday, no no i didn't like i was at the store i was at i went to walmart mm -hmm. you know after our chat and they only had it on ps4 and i wanted it on either like xbox or ps5 so yeah i held off on getting that held off on mario because like i have to go back and get uh get a game for our youngest for her birthday so i'll mm. probably just pick him up in one one swoop you know okay yeah she might even like mario golf you never know yeah, you know like yeah it's, they're uh, like fighting over spyro the dragon right now so i'm gonna oh. grab her a physical copy of that one. Oh, okay i didn't even know they had physical copies of spyro the dragon i thought it was a deal yeah a digital do. only game um okay my friends we are at probably the slowest uh news time of the year this is after e3 there is not much happening unless you want to talk about tv shows that are canceled or whatever because that's just what i feel like every day i read in the news or cyberpunk's finally back on the psn store but really it's 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 just been a slow week there's not a lot to say gaming wise um there's a lot to say Fast and Furious 9 wise. It's incredible. Go watch it. Do whatever you need to do to get yourselves in the theaters to watch that and love it because it's incredible. But because there's nothing that's really come out that's late, great, breaking, you know, get on the bus and, and read about it. We're going to talk about the games that came out this year so we can get ready to put together our mid-year game of the year list. We did this last year with you at the end of the summer. Um, we'll probably do it mid-summer this year. There's not 
not a ton of stuff coming out in July, so I don't <laughs> think we're really gonna, you know. I mean, um, yes, actually, actually, what? no, not a lot of stuff. But to answer a question I had on a previous episode. The near reincarnation game. It's a mobile game. Yeah, it comes out. I guess uh, for mobile. July twenty eighth. So if you're interested in playing that one, that's coming out. Yeah, there's some indies coming out in July too, like Chris Tales and all these other stuff. We'll see if they make it on our uh, the scent that uh, twin stick shooter that's going to be part of Game Pass. We'll see if they make it on our game of the year list. I doubt it, but just know that these games are are probably not going to be in contention for this. Our our five tops from this from the first half of 2021, but we're not doing that this episode right now. We're just going to go through month by month and talk about the games we liked so we can start figuring out our list. Um, and with that, let's kick it off to January and I'm going to kick it off with a game. I really did like that may end up making on my top five list. Hitman three. Did you end up getting a chance to play this? No, I did not. It, it's something I, I don't have the patience for those type of games. You know, I can't play splinter cell like games where you have to be like strategic I'm not uh, good at those. There's a lot of the ability to just follow the prompts if you don't want to be strategic, and it will walk you through the missions in a fairly okay. linear fashion. I would recommend next time it's on sale, giving it a shot. It was really my first real introduction into hit the this new Hitman trilogy. Like I've tried a level of two, and I think I tried a level of one. I never really gave it a full shot. But with Hitman 3, all of it was upgraded to the newest engine, and it was one of the earliest Xbox Series X games I had, and it's a okay. blast. It is right. super-duper fun. Uh, I have been going... I haven't turned it on for a bit, but I went through some of the Hitman 1 levels just to check them out, and I'm at, like, Bangkok. It's such a joy to play that game the problem for me is i'm also like you i don't have a ton of patience so i am doing a lot of the linear like follow the clue and go do this and go do that and that stuff makes it you know a lot easier but you still get the satisfaction of completing the yeah. uh the mission yeah uh, anything that stands out for you in january so far from, uh, uh did did not play a single one of these january games you did unfortunately you did, what did play, I play? One. the medium what, oh yes the medium um yeah i mean it's it's one of those games where, like, you much like Resident Evil Seven, and I guess there are parts of Eight. Like, you have something that's like chasing you a lot of the time, and mm -hmm. so it causes it's very anxiety-inducing. But it has a good story, and I I enjoy it. Like, I don't, you know, I know the critic, uh, different critics had different things to say about it that weren't too positive. But you know, I enjoyed my time in it. I enjoy the ability to walk in both worlds and kind of use clues. To find out what happened to the dead and how to help them along did, on their journey. Did you ever finish it? No, no. I'm about 60% through. I just, I think something else came out that I played instead. So I don't remember what that was. Oh, I was playing Night in the Woods instead. But yeah, I mean, it is, I do plan on going back to it. Really, uh, it's a walking simulator. There's no shooting. Yeah. Not There's not really anything in it besides walking and ducking and hiding. So... It's not something I was like in a hurry to finish, but it is something I'd like to go back to. I want to say it's from the team that did uh, the Blair Witch Project, which is yes. also a game I have no interest in. Um, I hated the Blair Witch Project oh, wow. so much. I'm a, about 80% of the game revolved around the mechanics used to interact with a dog, and I just I could not do it. Like It was not interesting enough to me to be that frustrated. Yeah, I, I, I tried like ten minutes of the medium. I have no interest in playing the rest of it. I, I was a little excited because it was a Series X game, but when I realized what it would be, which is a walking sim, I kind of lost all my real interest in it because it's those just those aren't my games. And if they are, they need to be like an hour or two, and they need to be really immersive, and they need to not be no like loading super screens, long. right? No loading screens. <laughs> uh, they just need to be like gone home. Or, you know, Firewatch or something where you're, it's a short story that I'm doing. If I'm just, they're just going to have me walk around and look at stuff for a couple minutes. That's what they need to do. Um, one okay. other game I tried out in January that I, I did not like very much. I played two of the opening levels and I just fell off and immediately Madden. Cyber, Sh <laughs> Madden, Cyber Shadow. I don't know if you remember that. That was a game produced by, uh, the Shovel Knight team. Uh, what is their name? Um, their name is Yacht Club Games. It was uh, produced by Yacht Club Games. It was a single developer. He plays like a ninja in a Ninja Gaiden style 2D action side scroller. I I just I don't care for those old NES uh, games where they don't have any modern sensibilities or or I should say many modern sensibilities because I love um, 
I love, what is that Shadow? What's that Ninja Gaiden-like game that came out two years ago that is incredible? Uh, do, 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 indie. Sekiro? No. Uh, indie Side Scroller. <laughs> Um, indie side scroller, Ninja. the messenger, the messenger. Thank you. Okay. I was going crazy. Yeah, that is, uh, it wasn't like that. That game, I loved, I played through it. I could not wait to finish it. Um, and a lot of what kept me going in the messenger was the knowledge that it would be an open world, uh, Metroid vania at some point. Okay. So I knew I would only be playing like a few hours of this side scroller, then a few hours, of something else. This doesn't have that. This is just the Ninja Gaiden move from left to right, kill the monsters, repeat. So, yeah, I fell off it quick, man. Um, yeah, and uh, just for the sake of brevity and because these are old games, we're, we're at February now, we're not going to talk about Control. We already talked about it when it came out in 2019 or, or last year when we got around to it. Uh, it it's not going to make our list because it's just a next-gen You're upgrade. being really controlling on this yep. podcast. Thank it you. Really That's just... what I want to do. I want to make sure you can't talk yeah. about it. Uh, February, uh, hit me with something. What did you play? Uh, so the only thing on this list that I have played was uh, Yeez 9, Monster from Nox. Um, mm -hmm. Typical Yeez game. You know, your character has... Actually, he doesn't have amnesia in this one. Okay. He is... Yeah, he's he gets... Adel, he right? Get, That's his name? Yeah, at, at all. He gets uh, accused of a crime, and then he gets put in jail, and then he gets given these powers by this witch lady, and... Uh, it's kind of a, a cool thing, much like uh, Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. You can cut you. There's like rifts in reality that you can kind of shoot yourself through. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, pretty pretty neat. Other than that, like it's just your typical Yeez game. A lot of uh, a lot of fighting, a lot of storylines that do or don't make sense. Um, right now, instead of being able to wander around a big world, you're you're confined to a city that has many different levels. Like what what's that city that you're in in uh, Final Fantasy twelve? Oh, Evilies. Or Evilies, the, yeah. I don't know the main city's name, but the world of Evilies is the uh, yeah. So you're it, much like the main city has all these different like layers. Rebanastra. Like, yeah, yeah. So much like that. That's that's kind of what the city in Yeez Nine is like. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it's it's fun, but it's not like uh, I don't know. It's not pressing. You know, on my list of things to finish. So yeah, it's on uh, coming out to Switch like in a week. Out to, Yep, coming out to Switch. If you're if you're into the Yeez games, I would definitely recommend picking it up. If if not to play it, it they, these games become uh, collectors' items within like three months of them being out. You know, the last one was it is Yeez Eight when that came out. That was uh, you know, that's selling right now for about one hundred and sixty dollars, and people you know it came out at a sixty dollar price point. So usually the the price goes up pretty quick on these things. Yeah, man, uh, it, it is a neat thing. Uh, I might do that exact thing, pick one up. Uh, but yeah, it's. I liked Ease 8. I didn't finish it. It is a very anime-style JRPG. Yeah, there is yeah, a demo absolutely. on Switch. So if you don't feel like, you know, if you want to check out how the performance is, do that. It's also on PS4, which, you know, if you play on your PS5, it will run even better. So yeah, I... I'm sure if you just want to play that style game, great. Um, did you have the anything? The combat is very smooth. That's yeah. one thing I do like I, about it. The rock, paper, scissors elements of it are, are really fun, where you can like be the same and it'll do a mil uh, mild damage or mm -hmm. you're, uh, it's weak against your type of uh, whatever it is. Like it's, I want to say it's like sharp, blunt, yeah, or you can some other thing. with your party members yeah. and have them use their attack. Yeah, it's, pretty, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's a really neat uh, mechanic in there. I did like it. I liked it in 8. I haven't tried 9 yet, but maybe I will give that a go at some point. Um, I played a lot of things in February, so I'll go through a couple before, in case you've done another thing, but I played Destruction All-Stars. It was part of PS Plus. It was the um, the car combat game where you'd be outside of the car, jump in a car, smash another car, and then your car, you try to destroy their car to get points, and you know, whatever. It sounds blah, like blah, Twisted blah. Metal. It is very much <laughs> Twisted Metal. It is less, uh, I would say, less memorable. And less character focused, even though that's what it tries to be. I had like 15 characters and they all remind me of the same thing. I couldn't even, I could maybe point them out on a list of characters, but beyond that, I don't know their names. It was, it was fun. It was really, really fun um, for the, you know, two hours I played it. I don't think I'll ever play it again. I think I already deleted off my PS5. So yeah, if you got a PS Plus and, and you want to check it out and there's anybody still playing it, give it a go. But otherwise, it's it's. I don't think it's worth. Uh, I think it's free. Just I think they gave up on trying to charge money for it. So I think it's just free. But if it was what it was supposed to be, which is seventy dollars, it's definitely not worth that. Um, okay. This is one that you nor I played. Uh, Little Nightmares Two. I just want to call it out. Like it looked cool. 
I just didn't get around to it. Yeah, um, our uh, our friend Stank Bank really liked the first one. I remember yeah, chatting yeah, I remember about that. that a lot yes. in the old days. Yeah, I doubt he got around to this one too with uh, three youngins. It's hard to get to uh, horror two D side scrollers, yeah. but um, yeah, I if that game ever is cheap or on Game Pass, I'll give it a shot. I I played a little bit of the first one and definitely enjoyed it. Um, it would it was never going to be like my game, so that's why I didn't yeah. pick it up. This game, however, is a game that is my game in a lot of ways and is weird because I said we're not going to be talking about old games, but this one gets a little bit of a uh, some slack cut to it because. It has Bowser's Fury, the new add-on. It is Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury for Switch. Um, I ended up getting stuck because I went to my enemy's uh, wedding in uh, Texas. So I was stuck out there in a snowstorm. And yeah. I ended up playing through this whole it's entire rough, rough 3D world plus there. Bowser's Fury. Yeah, I mean, uh, Texas is a real shit hole. It's a shit, shit storm. And, and no one likes it. And I went <laughs> there to... Uh, a spit on my enemy as he was getting yeah. married. Mm -hmm. I was out there just spitting on him consistently. Um, yeah. It was, I, it was what the right thing to do at the time. So I, it, uh, yeah. yeah, it felt like it. I know you are, you, you set your kissing booth up outside. So yeah. that was, yeah. Well, yeah. And, and I, was kissing everybody there with COVID because I wanted to make your <laughs> wedding extra bad. So, uh, kissing with COVID as they call it, uh, this won't get nice. us canceled at all. Um, nice. Anyways, Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury, I loved it, but I'll be honest with you, the thing I liked more than Bowser's Fury was actually Super Mario 3D World, the game I never played on the Wii U, after I uh, I got way into that game, man. And I think if they didn't make The Last World so ridiculous to get to, I would have 100 percent it, but I didn't want to play through the game with five characters, so yeah, I didn't get yeah. to do that. Um, I did not get a chance to play Persona 5 Strikers. Looked neat. It is a was that, game. Is, is that a extension of persona 5 or is that just uh like a different like a brawler or what what, what type from of what i understand it's like a direct sequel that doesn't take the ending into account that's what i've read i don't know a lot about it so okay. i just want to call it out because it is it is one of the larger titles that came out this year that's not a a remaster next gen upgrade so yeah. i just want to say hey that exists we neither of us played it so it's not going to make our list and then another game that may actually make my list even though i didn't i only put about 30 hours into it which wasn't enough for how big the game was bravely default 2 uh i really really dug it i've liked all the bravely default games but like all jrpgs it requires so much grinding and so mm -hmm. much time that it ended up killing all my hype and i fell off um i i Isn't do have that to kind say, of that's kind of par for the course for those games though right yeah yeah so that's that is why i don't finish many jrpgs anymore because they all want you to play them solely so yeah. uh and they want you to play as solely from uncharted in them so it's really weird <laughs> they add solely as a character model in really default too it's really really strange um march is there anything you... Uh, actually, I'll start this off so you can have uh, some time to look over the list, see if there's anything you played. I played Maquette. It was a free PS Plus game, an indie puzzler. It was uh, interesting. You know, you bring a big object and make it smaller. You move a small object into the, the small world and it becomes bigger in your world around you. I guess that's what a Maquette puzzle is. I dug it. I only played it for two hours. It has uh, voice uh, work from, I think, Bryce Dallas Howard and her husband. Um, so it was neat. I can't say much beyond that. I don't have any interest in ever playing it again because it wasn't, uh, some of the puzzles just got kind of arbitrary and obtuse. So yeah. I didn't really want to play anymore. Is there anything that you were uh, totally digging in March? No, I remember I wanted to play Paradise Lost, but I never got around to trying that one out. But yeah, other than that, there's not really anything there that I have touched this. What is uh, Paradise Lost? It was like a, it's like a game where you find some Nazis in an underground bunker. Oh, it's also an adventure game. I, I think I know yeah, which one you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. I I also just really didn't play anything in March. Wow, I'm looking at it, and that's very unusual for me. But yeah, the big titles that released were It Takes Two, the uh, co-op game by Joseph Ferris. Mm -hmm. And Monster Hunter Rise, and neither... Crash Bandicoot. Oh, it, well, Crash Bandicoot came out last year. But yes, the Switch version came out. Oh, yeah. okay, you're right. You're um, right. And Balan Wonderworld. So the big three, Balan Wonderworld. Big uh, reviews for that it, one. It takes two. I feel bad for that game, man. The the uh, the creator of Sonic uh, 
Yo- he, he retired. Yoshino. Yeah, he retired pretty much because yeah. of that game, it sounds like. And yeah. uh, It Takes Two and Monster Hunter Rise were the three big ones, and none of them interested me at all, so I did not buy a single game that month, which is good. Saved myself some money. April. Uh, April kicked off with kind of a bang, Outriders. I played uh, a hot minute of it. It's a live service game. Not super interested in those, so I fell off very quickly. Um, probably played about three hours. The combat's really fun, but I just don't have interest in like games where the main point is to loot grind to oblivion. And yeah. I also played some of Oddworld Soulstorm, which was a free oh, PS how was Plus that? game. Is that good? Uh, it's okay. I mean, it's not bad. It's just, I don't know what to say beyond like it exists. You know, yeah, like well, I don't. I remember with like Oddworld, like Abe's Odyssey, you know, and Abe's Exodus, and that like those games were big PlayStation titles when we were kids. So I mean, and I yeah. I enjoyed my time with them. I just like never was curious enough to explore anything after the PlayStation era. Yeah, Munch's Odyssey was the X, the original Xbox's launch title. Um, you played as the Munch, the the little dude in the wheelchair. Um, yeah, I I played. Uh, you know, it was a perfect PS Plus title. It looks really nice. Yeah. So it looks great for PS Five. I have no interest in playing that game any more than I did. It it was what it was, which is a 2D platformer um, with nice graphics. Uh, yeah. did, is there anything that stuck out to you in uh, April that you're like, so man, I, I, I love I played I played two games in April. Um, I played Near Replicant, and okay. that was that's one I'm still kind of in the middle of. But you know, and I've I've spoken my thoughts on it before. Like it's it's a very dark game, but it's I don't know. There's something about the storyline that really kind of has me wanting to know more, wanting to see more of it unfold. Yeah. Uh, I know Dr. Donna played through all 12, yeah. 12 endings, I think there were. I don't remember, and, but he played, th- I think it's six, but he played yeah, through five or he, six. They added another one, so I just don't know whatever it was. They added one more to that. Uh, yeah, he he yeah, loved yeah. it, but yeah. it is a very grindy game, and he mm-hmm. likes grindy games, so yeah. he likes getting his grind on, okay? He We're likes twerking it, he likes on. grinding, he likes all that stuff. But yeah, I mean it's 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 fun. I'm enjoying it. Um, I also played the new Pokemon Snap, which is it's you a did? Pokemon. Yeah, I did. Oh, I didn't know you did. You? I don't think you ever talked about it on the podcast. Oh well, yeah. I mean, I just kind of have played it. My so I, I got it for my kids, and I've just kind of played it here and there when they okay. put their switches down. But yeah, it's it's fun. I mean, it's it is it's literally a photography game. It's not. Uh, you know, not really a lot to it besides the fact that you're taking pictures of Pokemon, you know, and you get points for like getting multiple Pokemon in the frame or getting shots of them doing something or you, know, you can throw f- food out to kind of like bait them into a photo. And, you know, it, it's it's fun. You have to earn enough points in order to be able to progress to the next level. I never played the the one that was on Nintendo 64, but, you know, this one, this one's been, you know, it's, it's, it's pretty fun. Hmm. Yeah, I uh, I played a couple things in April. I didn't know you played New Pokemon Snap. I've thought about that game a few times, but I just don't think it's for me. Um, to keep with what I said about not really touching the list of remasters, next gen upgrades, or whatever, I did get Judgment. Yeah, there's some other stuff I got, but you know, like I said, it's an old game, two years old that they just did a remaster for. I, I yeah. like it, but I you know whatever, it's not going to make this list. When we do it, uh, there was a game that neither of us played that is huge, but whatever it was, it was the only interest I had in it was it was a Sony title that came to Xbox, MLB The Show 21. People seem to yeah. love that, and it's also on Game Pass. Um, and I did play some of Returnal, which we've discussed before. I have no interest in that game. I don't think I will ever go back to it, and I don't think it was very fun. I think they should have released it at like $30. It was a very beautiful game, but... Uh, the the people who love it are gonna love it, but yeah, you know that's not me. Uh, yeah. So this is so far this year's. It's gonna be hard to even choose a, a five that we love from this year. I feel like because this year's been pretty weak, but we got two more months to run through. Um, May man. Uh, let's just kick it off with the biggie, biggie, biggie. Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance. No, I'm just joking. That's the, uh, <laughs> I had nice. to throw that in there. Nice. Uh, no, the same day, though, an actual amazing game came out. Resident Evil Village. Heck yeah. Dude, that game is good. I was really worried. I almost I, I almost didn't buy it. You know, yeah. Like, just because 7 was too scary for me. So I was yep. like, eh, do I really want to dive into this world again? But it's it's good. I love it. 
Yeah, I I was worried when I saw the uh, early trailers and even played the early demo on the PS5. It just, I was like, man, this seems like it's rushed. I, I don't know what it was about it, but something felt off about it to me. And then it came out and I had so much fun playing that game. That game is incredible. I can't, I want to go back and play it. Next time I'm like not playing something new, I'm going to go back, which this year is fairly weak. So I'll probably get a chance to do that. <laughs> um, yeah, there was uh, another game that isn't going to make our list uh, per our rules, unless you break them, is Mass Effect Legendary Edition. I've already spoken my piece about that game multiple times on this podcast. I don't think it was necessary, and I don't think the remake was good. What do you? What are your thoughts on it, though? Even though it doesn't really. Count uh, I mean, for our it list. it is what it is. You know, it's just a Mass Effect that looks slightly better in some parts and mm -hmm. slightly worse in others. Uh, here's one that you played that I didn't touch at all: uh, Bio Mutant. That was yes. like the big double A game. Mm hmm. Yeah. Uh, th this is one I'm. I'm uh, I'm, I'm about 10 hours in mm. um been playing it in bits and pieces it, it, it's one of those that i they're they're slowly pushing patches out to kind of like address some of the things the critics have talked about and it's something that i would like to go back and play from the beginning once it's like more uh you know l aligning with what it was meant to be so but i mean for right now it's i'd, I'd probably leave it at like a 6.5 you know it's not uh it's not like unplayable, but it's not like it's not fun for this generation of consoles. Like it feels like something that should be on the Xbox 360. Yeah, I uh, I hear you. I think if we end up deciding on doing a top five, which I think we should, because we never really talk about indies. I think besides a couple of these biggies, it's my list is going to be smaller games because this year has been so rough with lar with with titles like bio mutant was the game i was most excited for in may knowing full well that it might suck but i was really really hoping yeah. it was going to be incredible and sure enough came out and everybody kind of had the same opinion as you yeah which makes me think like i dodged a 60 dollar bullet if you will <laughs> in terms of right. like it was not worth the money for that um yeah, honestly, May was a pretty weak month besides Resident Evil Village. <laughs> like, it was the that, the remaster of Mass Effect, and Biomutant. Otherwise, it was a bunch of other old remasters and upgrades and a couple indies here and there. I mean, there's a game called World's End Club, which if people are into Dengon Rampa or whatever it's called, they might have dug, but the reviews were terrible for it, and those are from even people that love that style of game. Um, there was also a re again, this is the one that wouldn't make our list even if we liked it, but there was a remake or a remaster of the 3DS game Metopia. But yeah, I don't know. I tried the demo and it was no good. Um, now we're at June, man. We're at the same month. It feels, isn't that crazy? We pretty much only talked about like six games that we actually had fairly positive things to say yeah. out of the major titles and we're already at June. Um, I'm looking through this early list. Does anything stand out to you right off the bat? Because I'm looking, there's nothing that's like, wow. Um, no. Uh, I'm trying to th see if I've played it. Okay, of this stuff. here, here like... we get to some stuff. Um, Chicory. It's an indie title. Looks great. I haven't had a chance to touch it, so I just want to throw that out that it's supposed to be a great indie title. We'll see if I get around to it. But that same day. With the E3 week, Final Fantasy VII Remake Intergrade came out. Mm -hmm. I'm in the midst of playing the Air Mission right now. I have some issues with it. I played it last night. There's stuff I like about it. There's stuff I hate about it. It is very reminiscent to how I felt about Final Fantasy VII Remake. And um, then we had Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, which we both played. Mm -hmm. I love that game. I think that game's very, very well made. Very fun. Um, you, you have any thoughts on any of those three before we get to these others that I'm sure we haven't played? Uh haven't played the Final Fantasy oh, Intergrade yet. The thing um, you bought the PS5 for because yeah, you're in FOMO. Know, you haven't even turned know, it on yet. I know. Um, Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. Again, fun. Not, you know, it's not the nine. I don't think it's as good as all the other media outlets claimed it is, but like. Okay. It is fun. It is yeah. fun. It's a it's a nice like I always like those uh, like Spyro the Dragon 3D platform type games and Ratchet and Clank kind of fills the that void left by the you know a lack of that type of game. Hmm. Um, it is very pretty to look at. It's it's very colorful. A lot 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 going on in the game. Yeah. If you know and I you know it's unfortunate it's only on PS5 but like if you're a PS5 owner I would definitely recommend getting it because it is it is a good time. Yeah. 
Uh, yeah, I'm glad there is a reason to buy a PS5 with Ratchet and Clank because I have one and it's like otherwise there's it's kind of been like just, hey, here's the upgrades. But I also feel for the people who weren't able to get one who would want to play it. Mm -hmm. um, there were some some titles we didn't touch that came out that were kind of big in a way like Game Builder Garage, that Switch game, like kind of like Dreams where you just like make games. Um, that seemed neat. I tried the demo. I don't think I'll be picking it up. I know how to program and it just doesn't seem like there's any real benefit to have program something spend all this time on something that is stuck on a nintendo console only and can't be used anywhere else yeah. um guilty gear strive is a cool looking 2d fighter from the company that did like dragon ball z or dragon ball fighter z, z or whatever uh looked neat i don't think i'll be picking it up um dark alliance we've discussed on this uh, podcast yes the greatest game ever made yeah that's gonna be number one with a bullet on all of our lists this is one, Ender Lily's Quietest of the Nights. This is one that I have almost pulled the trigger on multiple times, but I have so many other things I'm playing and so much that I'm doing right now. I don't know if I'll get around to doing it before the end of the year or playing it. It's like a Metroidvania. It's very beautiful. Looks pretty fun. Um, yeah. Beyond that, there was Mario Golf Super Rush and Scarlet Nexus that both came out the same day. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty much it for new do titles you know, in all of June. Do you know what I kind of want to play? What? the tokyo olympics game oh really you want to dress up I, as sonic and uh no, run through well, the races it, or what no it's not it's not even just that it's like i remember on nintendo 64 the uh was the, the olympic game they had the nagasaki olympic game was that what yeah, that I had was that one. yeah i had that one yeah that, that was, a, was a lot of fun and i just like i haven't touched an olympic game since then so i'm just curious if this is I don't know, maybe like as a kid, you're just hurting, not hurting, but like really wanting things to play. So everything's fun. Yeah. Or if it's like somebody could genuinely make a good Olympic game that appeals to adults. Um, uh, okay, cool. Yeah. Sorry. I totally agree with you. I just got a, a weird text message. Um, yeah, I, uh, I am interested in that game as well. I don't know if I'll get around to playing it. Like, you know, yeah. those are the fun old games. Like, I would probably rather play Mario and Sonic at the Olympics than yeah. that actual real one. Um, this is going to be a rough year to even make a top five, I have a feeling. I mean, hopefully I'm wrong. Hopefully by the end of the year, there's going to be so many good games like Halo yeah. and all such well, stuff. I mean, but they have uh, all these ones, all these games, like at the bottom of this list, haven't even been given announcements yet so or release dates. So we'll see. Yeah, I'm just interested by what this year is going to be because if we are able to successfully do a top five next week which you and i will probably discuss oh. off air if it's literally five full of our favorite games from the first half it's going to be some stinkers at four and five <laughs> for us yeah, or like well, some not great uh less yeah, big titles you know out of the the six i've played i think i'll <laughs> it'll yeah. be a pretty a pretty easy list for me to put together yeah it's it's rough and i'm looking through and like you know we always try to do a top five at the end of the year i was hoping this year we'd have so many we'd want to do a top 10 but it yeah. is just it's it's meager man if we're not actually discussing remakes like july the biggest game that i'm excited for is skyward sword which is yeah. like sad because i didn't want to play it when it came out and i it's a remake or not even like a really big remake but it is a remake of you know an old wii game um yeah Otherwise, yeah, man, I'm looking at this list, and there's so many just, like, remasters, next-gen upgrades, uh, you know, maybe kind of new games, but really just iterative, like Far Cry 6, uh, Back for Blood, like, all these titles where it's, like, they could be great, but there's also a chance they're just going to be... also be nah. really bad. Yeah. yeah. Guardians of the Galaxy. That's one we talked about from uh, E3 that's, like, it looks like it could be horrible. So, yeah, yeah my bro, um, I will... Uh, talk to you soon did you have anything you wanted to add before we ended up uh before we ended up hitting the road no that's it man we're good okay my dude i will talk to you on the manana by that i mean sometime next week okay.